Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. If you are new here, my name is Natalie. I am a physical therapist by day, but I really enjoy decorating my home. And a lot of my content on YouTube here is about decorating my home, how I fit in decorating projects into my everyday work life, being a physical therapist, being a wife, things like that. I'm just sharing my life on here for y'all. Uh, all that to say, this video today is going to be talking about things you can do to make your builder grade home feel a little bit more styled, a little bit more personalized and custom. So for those of y'all who don't know, my husband and I built our first home. We bought it back in December and it was done by May. We are in a neighborhood, so we picked out the lot and the floor plan we wanted and a lot of things that the exterior paint and design, um, the door color, the all of the interior paint, carpet, flooring, tops. Uh, we got to pick a lot of things out. It's not 100% custom, of course, but we did get to pick a lot of things, which I am grateful for. That being said, there are definitely things about a builder grade home that don't exactly fit the cozy cottage um, farmhouse style that I personally really love. So I have been doing my best to add little touches here and there that feel a little bit more custom and a little bit more decorated. So one thing you can do is add an accent wall. We were lucky enough that our builders actually offered this as an add-on and we decided to just go ahead and let them do it. So we have a shiplap wall in our dining room and we also have shiplap around our island in the kitchen. You can definitely do your own shiplap. It's not too terribly difficult from what I hear. I have not personally done it, but we just decided, we didn't know a lot about DIY at the time and we just decided to have it added on. And I'm glad we did. It, it adds a personal touch. And if we didn't do that, we probably would have ended up doing it ourselves at some point. Um, the other thing you can do is a board and batten wall. So people will take those bender board strips and just go across and then make kind of squares. And it's just, it looks a little bit textured and then you can just paint it whatever color. People I know just nail down the bender board with a nail gun and you create that pattern and then paint it whatever color you would like. So you can do that for an accent wall as well. Another thing you can do is add wallpaper. So a lot of people are doing the like patterned wallpaper, floral wallpaper, or you can do a textured wallpaper. So what I mean by that is it's something that looks like a texture. So you can do shiplap wallpaper and you can do faux brick wallpaper and it's peel and stick. I actually think I might use the faux brick peel and stick in my, my laundry room. Um, we'll see if that happens, but it's a little bit cheaper and less of a commitment than doing a full panel. Like if you wanted a faux brick panel wall, the peel and stick wallpaper is probably less realistic, but probably a little bit easier and it's peel and stick. So you just remove it if you don't like it. You can also do tile, peel and stick tile, either on your floors, which I guess is not, it's not exactly an accent wall, but you can do that on your floors or you can do it on a wall. I think I might do that on a small wall that we have above our bathtub. So I might tile that, we'll see if I end up doing that. But I think that that would be really cool. You can get peel and stick tile from Home Depot, Hobby Lobby, sometimes even Target and Amazon. You just have to look for peel and stick. Another thing you can do as an accent wall is just paint. Paint a small wall a different color to stand out. I personally like having white walls, at least at this time, um, but if it's if it's more your style to add a color in there, then I think that that can be a really great idea as well. You just wanna add some kind of statement um, to the wall and that will make it look a little bit less builder grade. Another thing you can do that is actually an easier fix than I knew it was, is you can change light fixtures. So I'm not I'm not gonna give any advice on the wiring or anything, but, and we haven't done this yet, but this is something I wanna do maybe as a Christmas gift to ourselves, but you can change out the light fixtures in your home. They have really affordable light fixtures on Ikea's website. It's probably the cheapest I've ever seen them, um, but you can get them at Home Depot, you can get them from Amazon, um, various places you can get alternative light fixtures and just swap yours out so you don't have those builder grade ones. We have some really terrible light fixtures that I would definitely like to switch out. So that is an easy fix. And going along with that, you can change out your hardware. So we upgraded our hardware in our kitchen um, to be a 
stainless steel pole instead of just a knob, but you can definitely just get new hardware from Amazon. Hobby Lobby usually has it and it's usually 50% off. So that's probably the best place to get it in my opinion. Um, you can change hardware on your bathroom or kitchen cabinets, or you can change it on your furniture or your built-ins if you have those. Um, that's just something you can do to add a little more personal touch or a little bit more character. It's not something I've done except for on a piece of furniture before, but I do think it is a really great option. One thing that we actually did do with our home was we asked the builder not to install mirrors in the bathroom. So you know how you have the builder grade, just like flat mirrors that are glued to the wall. I asked them not to install those. That way I could add my own mirrors. And don't get me wrong, hanging two mirrors above sinks side by side that need to be even, that need to be hung on a stud or with drywall anchors because of how heavy they are is kind of a pain, but it is so worth it. I actually found our mirrors in our master bathroom were from the Studio McGee line at Target. I love them. They are a beautiful matte black kind of rounded edge rectangular mirror. And then our guest bedroom mirrors were, or guest bathroom mirrors were also from Target and they are a really cool rustic wood distressed mirror. And I think the mirrors probably each were about $60. So I spent about between two and $300 on that. And to me, it makes a big difference and we'll just leave them if we ever sell the house. Um, I do think it's a great selling point and it makes your bathrooms look a lot more styled and personal when you have those mirrors. I also changed out the mirror in the half bath downstairs. It was just a hanging mirror. It wasn't stuck on the wall or anything, but the ones the builder, the one that the builder put in was really not my style. So I just replaced that with a cheap mirror from Hobby Lobby. If you're unable to get them to not put in the builder grade mirrors, there are ways that you can frame those mirrors. I've seen it on Pinterest. Just look up how to frame a builder grade mirror and they show how you can get pieces of wood and stain them and kind of glue them around the mirror to make it look a little bit more decorated and a little bit more custom. Another thing you can do that we also did was install shelves. So if you have a builder grade home like us where it was very bare, we have built in kind of, um, we have our fireplace is like comes out from the wall and then we have in inlaid walls essentially. We had the builder put in built in cabinets. We did pay for that, but we did not have them do the built in shelving because I wanted to have shelves that were not white. I wanted to have shelves that were a wood stain. So Josh and I just built those ourselves. We bought the brackets and the pieces of wood from Home Depot and I also got the stain from Home Depot. I used um, dark walnut as the stain and these are the crate and palette um, brackets, which they're a little bit more expensive, but they look better in my opinion. Um, and we just hung those shelves ourselves and I think that it makes a very, it makes a builder grade home seem a lot more custom when you have that kind of contrast. It just feels a little bit more homey. Um, and I also did some little shelves in my kitchen, which y'all might've seen that was in a video, um, a couple of videos back, but I added those to make the kitchen a little bit more, not eclectic, but just have a little bit more charm. So that is another thing that you can do. We are also going to be building our own mantle and doing faux brick around our fireplace. We haven't done that yet. We'd like to do it before Christmas so we can hang stockings. Um, so maybe in the Christmas home tour, y'all will see that, I'm hoping. Um, but that's another thing that you can do is build your own mantle if your builder grade home like ours does not come with any of that. Along with shelves, I add a lot of peg rails, hooks, various things like that to my walls because they're easy to decorate. So you can just hang them. Um, and just put things on them. I have one in my entryway, a peg rail that I have like a market bag on and a cutting board. Um, people will put them in their kitchen and they'll throw a like pan on them or an apron or dish cloth or all of the above. Um, they're just really fun to decorate and they add some decor to your walls and make the home feel less plain and builder grade and modern. Last thing that I would say you can do to make your home feel cozier and make it feel like it has more character than a standard builder grade home is to get accent rugs. So we have carpet in our upstairs and our whole downstairs is hardwood. 
Um, so I kind of dressed it up by adding a kitchen runner that I really liked. We added a real big eight by 10 rug in our living room. Um, I need one for the dining room, but we don't have that yet. And I also would like some for upstairs. If I could have an accent rug in our master and in this room, my office, and in the guest room, I would really like that because those rugs just add a lot more of a statement and more intentional feel than the builder grade plain beige carpet. So those are things you can do. Rugs can get expensive. I found that um, Ross is a really good place to get them and overstock.com as well as um, I think it's Rugs USA. They have some good somewhat affordable options if you want to just take your time kind of getting rugs. My mom asked me, why do you need all these rugs right away? And I said, I don't need them right away, but there's something I would like for the future to kind of add some cozy and warmth to some of these bedrooms upstairs because they just layer on top of that builder grade carpet to make it look more styled and decorative. So anyways, you guys, that is all the tips that I have for making your builder grade home a little bit more custom. These are things I found from watching YouTube videos um, and from looking on Pinterest and reading decor books and things like that. So um, I hope this is helpful to you guys. I myself will be trying to follow some of these tips as I am decorating my home um, and continue to do so. So anyways, if you guys liked this video, please like and subscribe. I will be back every Wednesday at 8 a.m. Eastern time and every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern time with more lifestyle and home content. And I hope to see you guys here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.